What a beautiful day it is in the Lord, even if it's not so beautiful outside. We are happy to have you inside this sacred space and joining with us in worship. Those of you who are in here and those of you who are online this morning, a shout out to our wonderful video team. Uh, Jason and Randall, y'all are just rock stars. Great job. Thank you for making me look good and more importantly, helping people worship with us. From, we have people from all over the place joining us vir virtually. So thank you, team. Do want to share just a couple of announcements, maybe a few, before we begin our time of worship. Then we'll lift up also prayer concerns and joys that we want to... Uh, share with one another as a worship community. Okay, first I want to say thank you. Isn't that important? That's central to our faith and it's certainly central to my role as pastor. You're giving, you're support of our ministry. You live outside of yourselves. Uh, thank you. We finished our year uh, with a balanced budget. We were grateful. We just got our financial report. Thank y'all for that more than a balance. We were positive uh, toward our revenue as a as it opposed to expenses. So we're being good stewards of what God has equipped us with. Thank you, Session, Ann Wigington, and she just rolled off, and all you elders that make sure we live within our means and still serve our community. But thank you all for being a part of that. So speaking of giving, uh, we, we had a great uh, week in giving last week, had a great worship attendance, 55 within our sanctuary, many more joining us virtually. Also, our mission emphasis for this month uh, is the South Tippa School District students that do not have enough funds to pay for their lunch. We have already collected $1,298 for that fund, and that's giving food to kids in our community in the name of Christ. Thank y'all for being a part of hope and light in our community. Uh, other announcements, I do want to share our children's Sunday school class. That's easy for me to say, isn't it? Our children's Sunday school class has a new home. We have moved them to the Greg Center, and that's from 930 to 1015 every Sunday morning. Thank you for our teachers. Uh, we are so grateful for y'all's leadership, Elizabeth Elliott, B.J. Horton, Grace Ann. Uh, y'all are doing a marvelous job. We'll also begin our membership class and inquirers class February 26th over there at the Greg Center too so and that'll be a six-week journey up unto up to uh, Easter Sunday where any who would like will be inspired to join the church and become a part of the uh, formal ministry here at RPC okay um, looking for nursery volunteers to assist. Uh, we don't always have people in the nursery, but we do some as well. So uh, if you can assist with that and would like to do so, Grace Ann's our nursery attendant today. And yeah, that's not a have to case. If any of the young folks want to go after young disciples to time to the nursery, they're welcome to do so. Parents, uh, that's a note for all of you, and we thank you for all of you who serve. All right, um, we do have, I'm going to touch on Young Disciples time. I'll talk about Gene Ketchum's service and uh, our meal here during that time. Thank you for all of you who are a part of that. I'll elaborate on that shortly. Did um, Are there other announcements we need to mention before we share in prayer concerns or joys? Okay. <clears throat> couple of uh, updates and, and new information. Lamont McLean was in the emergency room this morning. He has uh, been dealing with a spell of vertigo in recent days and took a fall this morning, scraped his arm pretty good. I stopped by the emergency room on the way to worship and uh, all the x-rays were good. So negative on the x-rays. He uh, his shoulder was hurting pretty good in his hip but just took a big fall and scraped his arm. So he and Shirley uh, are grateful for your prayers. I know they'll be joining us online this morning, but uh, grateful that he didn't have any more substantial injuries. So let's remember Lamont and Shirley. We continue to remember Ann in her absence, she and Bobby praying for you all in her full recovery and 
deliverance from the pain that she's been dealing with so terribly for so long. Other updates, uh, Janae Gray Connor, we've been praying for her. She had a successful procedure this week, so we celebrate that. My almost said old classmate. I'd say former classmate, Tommy. That'd be better than calling us old, wouldn't it? My Faulkner classmate and neighbor. We're Faulkner Eagles, y'all. Okay. Um, we continue also to pray for Miss Helen Parks. She will probably uh, continue in rehab through this week, maybe Thursday. So um, I hope to visit with her and perhaps Linda soon as well. We do, uh, we remain prayerful for the Gene Ketchum family. Had a wonderful celebration of her life yesterday and, and the family was well cared for by the women of our church. Thank you for that important ministry. And Betty Wyndham, we are praying for Betty's family. Several of you were a part of that uh, celebration of her life and uh, we do lift up all of her loved ones. Are there other additions this morning to our prayer list? Clyde Ray Robertson, yes. He is still in the hospital. Okay, so we remember Clyde Ray Robertson, uh, brother-in-law of mom and dad, and uh, he is in the Corinth Hospital. So we want to pray for him and Grace, all of their family. Are there others? Indeed, for sure. Thank you for that. Uh, pr- yes, yes. Prayers for the Tyree Nichols family, uh, the city of Memphis, and certainly the mother who uh, uh, is grieving that loss and all the friends and loved ones of Tyree. Thank you for that. Are there others? Vince, how you doing? Good, good. I'm glad to see you all here this morning and uh, been praying for each and every one of you throughout this week in your journey, and I know you're praying for me, so... Friends, if there are no other concerns or joys, let us together now worship our Lord in that joy and in gladness. Lovely. Thank you for that, Lynn. Our call to worship, familiar words to some, encouraging and comforting words to all. Micah the prophet says, With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Friends, join me in responding to that call, that invitation to express our worship to our Lord by sharing with me as we stand 
in a hymn of praise, number 426. seated. I asked about Vince. I met Paula. I was looking at Paula and said, Vince, she's the one that's had the health concerns, not Vince. We probably need to pray for him too as a nurse maid, don't we? We pray. We need to pray for the pastor's wife. Manya wasn't feeling well this morning, so I was remiss to mention her, so she was prepared to come to church and came down with a significant stomach ache this morning, so we'll be prayerful for her too. All righty, friends. Let us together now, as we transition from praise to prayer, lift up together our confession of sin and know together God's forgiveness for us as his people and his children. Would you pray with me? We confess that we have sacrificed your goodness for material goods, we have meditated on our problems instead of meditating on your promises. We have shunned your faithful love by seeking solace in sinful places. We humbly seek your mercy, O Lord. Please forgive our rebellion and ignorance, our wayward hearts and loose tongues. Restore us, O Lord, to the joy of your salvation and make us willing to obey you. Amen. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? God, who did not withhold the beloved Son, but gave him up for all of us, will God not also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Would you stand with me as we celebrate our forgiveness and proclaim our forgiving God's glory and song?
This morning's first reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 18 and then continuing through the end of the chapter. If you'd like to follow along, you can find this in the New Testament in your pew Bible on page 166. I'll begin at verse 18. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demanded signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness is wiser, wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you join me a few moments today? Man, how you doing, Brookser? And Hannah, good to see y'all. How are you? And y'all got some fancy footwear on today. You got on some ostrich skin boots, Brooks, I think. Hannah's got those shiny slippers. My goodness. Good to be with y'all. You know, uh, being together is important. I was thinking, I was sitting up here a while ago, I was with Brooks not long ago at a basketball game. You remember me going to your... Daddy's basketball game, and you sat in Miss Manya's lap. How about that? We got to watch the ball game together. That was fun. And Hannah was nice enough to bring her grandparents with her today. They were being with you, spending time with you. You know, sometimes spending time with those that we care about, those that are our friends and our family, it says to them in a way even that we don't, with our words, that we love them that they mean a lot to us. Sometimes what we do says more about how we feel about people than what we say, doesn't it? It means something when we show up. That's what we're talking about. That's why I went to that basketball game the other night. I didn't want uh, Coach Austin to write me off either and say, golly, I'm fixing to fire you as my preacher. You had not been to a game yet. It means something when we show up and, 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 and are there for people we care about. Well, you know, yesterday we had a funeral for someone who was a member of our church a long time, many years, and had moved away and even hasn't been in this community for almost 10 years. But we still showed up. And we still showed her family love, even though it had been a long time she'd been active here. And the women of our church, the Presbyterian women, y'all just wouldn't believe. They've made the best meal had it beautifully decorated, even had extra fried chicken for the preacher to take home with him. So I was so grateful for the way they showed up yesterday and showed their love for one who'd long time been a member of this church. You know what? I think there's a couple of messages there now. 
One is the church never leaves you. When you become a member of a church, as we're going to start talking about here in February, even if you, like the prodigal son at times, may wonder away, the church never gives up on you. When you say this is part of my family, it's going to be part of your family forever. So thank y'all for ministering to that family. That's one message. But another message is this. We just read a scripture in Micah 6, 8. And that prophet said this, what does the Lord require? And he spoke of it's not so much about what we say, but it's what we do in kindness of God for others. He said, what does the Lord require but to do justice, be fair. But uh, what does the Lord require but to do just love, mercy, or kindness, be kind to each other, and to walk humbly with our God. I'm grateful that yesterday, these women of the church, they showed kindness to a family who was sad because they'd left, lost a family member, and they'll never forget the kindness that was shown. So, as young disciples and older disciples, let's remember to show up and do kind things for those we love, because in doing so, we will truly be living out the love of Jesus every day and making everybody's life better in him. Okay? Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, for this day you've made for these beautiful young disciples. They give me joy in ministry. Thank you for Hannah and Brooks. We pray especially your blessing upon them this day as they seek to be molded and made more in your image for your glory. And may all of us older disciples learn from them, for you tell us the children are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Unless we become like one of them, we can never see it or enjoy it. So pray, O oh God, that we will continue to nurture them as we grow together in your love and for your glory. In Christ's name, amen. All right, good job, buddy. You see your mama back there? I do too. Y'all both have on puffy jackets today, don't you? Would you like some candy? We've got chocolate and the Calabuses aren't here today. They're not going to get chocolate. We, we got what? This is chocolate. Oh, happy birthday. I, you got to have to talk loud. Whose was? Brooks had a birthday. That's right. My lip reading's not good. She, she is. Can't hear as good as I want to in the last one. I left y'all at home to
Our sermon text for today is from the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 5, known by many as the Beatitudes. So we will begin there in chapter 5 with verse 1 and continue through verse 12. If you would like to follow along, you can find this reading in your pew Bible on page 4 in the New Testament section of the Bible toward the back. As we prepare together... To listen for God's word spoken among us, let us petition our Lord to give us the ears to hear. Would you pray with me? Oh God, we do seek and search and petition and cry out for illumination. That you would give us the light to see, the courage to walk in the steps that would look like you and offer you in love to the world around us. We come here today in this sacred space. We set time apart wherever we're worshiping virtually today because in worship, this is a time where we pause to offer our thanksgiving, to count our blessings for the goodness of life in you, O God. And even in our worship, We strive to be made and molded more as the clay that you would have us to be, for you are the faithful potter. So will you speak to us, O Lord? Will you encourage us? Will you correct us? Will you challenge us? Will you comfort us? That in hearing your word, we may receive it and live it out for your glory and on behalf of the world around us. It's in Christ that we pray. Amen. From Matthew chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Friends, church, this is the word of the Lord. The Beatitudes as named here by many scholars. It's a reflection, it's the beginning of Jesus' great sermon on the mount and we'll journey with Matthew throughout this sermon in the coming weeks. But the preamble, the introductory words that the prophet Matthew speaking and being a herald on behalf of the gospel wants to proclaim is that there are blessings in God. There are blessings For us as people of faith, and what does it mean to be people of faith if it's anything but trusting in God? It is a blessing to put our hope and trust in the one who not only created us, but claimed us and named us as his very own. So let's look at these beatitudes, these 
blessings individually today and, and perhaps hear a message with fresh ears in a way that we never have before these Beatitudes. As they begin, blessed are the poor in spirit. Jennifer helped me in our Bible study this week, Lynn, to understand that description of a blessing in a way I never had before. She said to be poor in spirit is to be bankrupt spiritually. Wow, now we can understand that in a practical sense. Even if none of us have been bankrupt, we certainly fear that, whether it be in our business, in our personal lives. The thought, the threat of having nothing of value left. Those are the words used by the evangelist Matthew today to speak of the spiritual plight of some in the faith. Isn't there times where we find ourselves, if we're honest, in some type of a dark night of the soul, spiritually, emotionally, maybe mentally, where we too realize and live out these words of Matthew that say you who are in that condition maybe you feel spiritually bankrupt but have hope have hope Matthew would say for the kingdom of heaven is yours you see Matthew is pointing us in this text to an eschatological event Something to come. Something to anticipate and to hope for. That's the promise of our God. That even as we find ourselves in darkness, depression, prayer, peril, and the stressors of life, have hope for it will not last. God will conquer the darkness. Light will come. That's the promise of heaven. The next beatitude, the next blessing says, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. What good news. Many of us who are living, living with grief now at the loss of loved ones are maybe for years precious family members that we've lost, that that hole will never be filled. We continue to live in the sorrow, in the grief, in the loss of the one who poured so much into us. Haven't we all stood at a visitation and embraced someone with loving care and uttered these words? I just don't have the words. And the hug was enough. The presence of being there spoke more than we ever could have said verbally. See, we are inadequate in bringing comfort to those that we love. We strive in every way we can to comfort them who mourn and to sustain them in their grief but have hope people of faith, for the blessing of God is this. Those who mourn will be comforted. It doesn't say they may be. Perhaps they'll find comfort. Maybe they'll find comfort. No, those who mourn in the kingdom of God will be comforted forever. Your grief will be no more. That's the promise of what's to come in the eternal, in the heavenly home God has prepared for us all. He continues in verse 5 by saying, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are open and loving and humble and willing to not have to have it always their way on their terms. You know, in our world, 
it seems like so often it's the loud, the aggressive, the, those who maybe even lack integrity that oftentimes get ahead. But here, the writer, the evangelist Matthew, says it will ultimately be turned upside down when we approach those among us with meekness and humility. Those are the ones ultimately and finally who will inherit the earth. That's the gift of God's kingdom to come. And I believe as we start transitioning in these blessings of God's kingdom even now, you see, I think this passage isn't only about an expectation of heavenly comings, but it's also a call for us to embrace these blessings even now. Let's see how the transition continues with our text. It says here, not only will the meek inherit the earth, but in verse 6 it says to us, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Right living, fairness, justice. In a world that can at times seem so corrupt, and all that we want is fairness. You know, how many of us have gone to a sporting event and get animated when we feel like the game isn't fair? If someone's cheating or if our team gets a bad call price, we feel that we have been unjustifiably frauded or offended. There's an innate desire for us as human to want things to be fair. And not only it seems, as Matthew saying to us, that the great heavenly realm will bring justification, but maybe Matthew is calling us as people of faith now, how can we work toward righteousness as God's ambassadors here on earth to help bring about the kingdom to our neighbors, to those among us, to live out loud with our faith, not only verbally, but how we practice it. So we continue to hear these blessings where uh, Matthew says, Blessed are the merciful, they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, they will be called children of God. And then finally, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Now see, what I want us to embrace here today, friends, is the promise, yes, of what's to come in the kingdom of heaven for us who hope in Christ, for us who trust and put our faith in Christ that restoration will come from whatever darkness that is plaguing our lives. But there's also this call, as I alluded to, for us to live out that light even now. We are the hope as Christ messengers in a world that is filled with so much despair, so much darkness, so much pain. And here's also the point, I think, that Matthew is saying, even as we live out the light of Christ, it's not going to be easy. Friends, there's still going to be challenges in this world, as we journey in this brokenness and sinful state that we all exist and are a part of. He uses these last three verses to speak of the persecution of living out the faith. It's not going to be easy to strive to be people who are meek, People who are merciful in a world where there's little mercy. As we prayed for the family of Tyree Nichols this morning, as his mom is passionately grieving and saying, I can't even grieve right now. I just want justice, fairness, restoration for my baby. It's not going to be easy for us to live as Christ's light in the world around us even now, so why would we do it? 
Why would we take on the challenge of being persecuted ourselves? Why would we embrace the willingness to, to be taken advantage of from others when we try to live out light and love in a world so filled with darkness and hate and individuality? Why would we? You see, the good news, friends, of the gospel is this. I believe that as Jesus called these disciples... In our passage today, he had been through the time in the wilderness. He'd gone through the temptation. He'd received the gift of baptism. He called his disciples, and now he began to preach that the kingdom of heaven has come near. And who's he preaching to? Our text says, When Jesus saw the crowds, he sat down, and his disciples came to him. You see what that says to me is if we do the things of Jesus even now we get to dwell with Jesus even now. That's why we practice the faith. You know as scholars, as individuals who seek to learn maybe it was in our college setting or high school setting there's a great gift at sitting at the feet of one who we trust, one who is wise. Rich Kowser told me Marianne Brown is the best American history teacher, I think is American history, best history teacher there's ever been. And he loved to be able to sit at the feet of that teacher. You get to spend time with that one we respect and who pours life into us. Friends, when we choose to be Christ, to be his hands and feet, in this world around us, we get to sit at his feet and be sustained no matter what we face in this earth. I spoke to you a few minutes ago about are the young disciples about the celebration of Gene Ketchum's life and the wonderful work that our Presbyterian women did who lived out loud yesterday by doing the faith. Near the end of Gene's celebration of life, we got to talking about cast iron skillets of all things. Can you believe that? Made its way into a sermon. And the grandkids were the one who inspired it. They said that she had taught them how to take care of their iron skillets. And the very first thing young grandson Jimmy did, not listening, was he put it in a dishwasher, Eddie. Boy, that's a no-no, isn't it? That may even be a sin in the South. What do you think? Put your black cast iron skillet in the dishwasher. So Jean had to school him. She had to teach him how to take care of that black iron skillet how to, what we like to say in our family, how to season it, right? And I don't know, this may be a little nasty, but if you really want to care for your cast iron skillet, you don't even wash it, do you, Pop? You just wipe it out and reuse it. If you've got a good cornbread skillet, it doesn't need to be washed. You just continue to have it seasoned from the good nutrients that's gone before it. You know, in our passage today, we are given blessings of the history of our faith. Blessings that were passed down in Jesus' very first sermon that still speak to us 2,000 years later. What Matthew was doing when he penned this was he was saying to us, modern day believers, even today, as you seek strength and nourishment from this faith, remember these stories from old. Remember this promise of blessings that were first preached by Jesus 2,000 years ago that they will continue to nourish you, your family, and your journey of faith. You see, I think that black skillet is a great imagery. It reminds us for us to enjoy the feast of the meal today, we need something 
from the past. We need the stories of our faith that have seasoned our faith journey. We need the stories of those forebears who've lived out loud the faith for us so we take something of the past to continue to make the feast of the heavenly banquet even more good tasting to the world around us so that when they taste and see, they will know the Lord is good. Amen. Friends, I invite you now to join with me in affirming your faith and remembering with me what it is that we believe. Would you stand now and let us together recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us continue responding in faith now by giving of ourselves and sharing together in God's tithes and our offerings. Let's stand together.
let us share together the prayers of the people. Oh God, we give you thanks that we have resources to share. We pray your holy blessing upon these offerings and the offerings of our lives. May they live out loud our love by what we do in addition to what we may say. May they inspire this world to see the hope that's found in you, O God, as the giver of life and the claimer of us as your children. We pray your blessing on our congregation as you've given us the grace of life and mercy. Help us to live that out in this community. We pray for all churches. We lift up every church in this community, those who are going through challenges, those who are celebrating great joys. We inspire and comfort and empower their ministries. We pray for our nation. We are grateful and blessed to be part of this land of liberty and freedom. We are not a perfect land. We are one who together seek to live out justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Guide our leaders, our president, our senate, our congress, the supreme court. We thank you for those who serve in our military and bring deliverance and hope to people and risk their own safety. We pray for those experiencing the war in Ukraine as for healing and peace in that land. We lift up our state, city, and county governing bodies, everyone who holds authority over others, the powerful, the rich, those who have the capacity to influence so much through the gifts they've been graced with. We pray for the weak and the sick, the hopeless and the hurting, the least, the last, the lost, Pray for restoration in our community and may it start with us. We pray for every person on our prayer list as we've mentioned this day. We ask for miracles of grace, and healing, and comfort. That you may mold us and make us all more in your image for your glory. We pray for the friends and family you've entrusted us to, those closest to us, and those from whom we're estranged, God, our enemies. We lift up decisions that we're facing right now, individually and collectively, problems that are before us, perils. Will you bring clarity and healing and wholeness and restoration? And now, God, we celebrate the great gift of praying for each other. And knowing that everyone's praying for us right now, this is our moment. To receive the prayers of the faithful, knowing that everyone is praying for us, whether the need be spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, relational, professional, eternal. God, will you hear our pleas and bring miracles of grace into our lives as we live out that grace. And now as your children... We lift our voices as one and say together in prayer the words you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. We sang this song yesterday, didn't we, at the funeral. Is that right? Beautiful hymn. Listen to the words here as we sing all four verses of these two-line songs. Bless me the tie that binds.
It has indeed been a blessing to me. On this day of reading and preaching on blessings, it's been a blessing for me to be in the house of God. I pray you know this blessing. And would you receive God's blessing for us now as his children. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance, his gaze upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen.